Once again, it's time to go team to team presented by Cigna, proud partner of the Arizona Cardinals, Joe Shad, who covers the Dolphins for the Palm Beach Post, joining us. First, Joe, appreciate the time. And well, let's not waste any time. The storyline this week is two a time is coming to the Valley of the Sun for the first time. I saw highlights. We know what the stats say, his first career start. Not great, but what did you see that maybe others who only saw a glimpse of what we saw highlight-wise from that first career start? Saw some rust from Tua Tungavailoa. You know, there were only two passes of 20 yards or more, both of those incomplete. There was a 15-yard completion, but it was a very conservative, safe game plan, try to protect Tua in his first start, let him take a hit, which he did early in the game. But Tua was only sacked once, so the Dolphins' offensive line is held up pretty well from a pass protection perspective. And there was a lot of focus, as we expected, on slants and screens and short outs, trying to get the ball out quickly. So it was, it was kind of vanilla. It was kind of boring. Uh, Dolphin fans had waited two years to see Tua suit up with number one and actually start a game. And then it was kind of anticlimactic because there wasn't a lot to be excited about. Yeah, that first drop back pass, perhaps maybe his welcome to the NFL moment gets sandwiched. And on one end of that sandwich is Aaron Donald. He can take a hit, but you talked about that vanilla offense. What is going to happen this week, considering that running back wise, there is not much left with Miles Gaskin going on injured reserve. Matt Breida is hurt with a hamstring issue and DeAndre Washington not eligible to play this week after he was picked up via a trade. Dolphins really haven't gotten much going on the ground at all this season anyway. Uh, so maybe Jordan Howard comes back off the scrap heap. Uh, the Dolphins gave him money as a free agent before the season, but he's been a healthy scratch the last three weeks. He's kind of a power back. And offensive coordinator Chan Daly prefers running backs who can catch the ball, which is why the former Cal product Patrick Laird uh, as well as a former Washington running back, Ahmed, who I've never seen play and I've never spoken to, uh, they're going to suit up. And so uh, we'll see if the Dolphins get anything going on the ground. I would expect more of the same, a lot of screens to the running backs, a lot of short passes, uh, but it, it, it's been very difficult to get the run game going. Well, we know this team right now is winning because of its defense. The number one scoring defense going up this week against the number one offense, at least in terms of yards per game. But it's not a little, it's, I mean, it's not a lot of big names on that defensive side. In fact, I've, I've kind of heard that old nickname, the no-name defense and what the Dolphins have done so far this season. Hey, you know, there are some guys who have gotten paid. A couple of years ago, the Dolphins paid Xavier Howard. He is a former Pro Bowl corner who has sort of gotten back up to speed after yet another knee injury. The Dolphins paid Byron Jones, the former Cowboys corner, who's been banged up, but when he's been on the field, he's been very good. And they paid Kyle Van Noy, the linebacker, who was, you know, resurrected his career in New England after not having great success in Detroit. So, but the thing about the Dolphins defense, uh, and, and it's very Patriots-like, you know, you never know where the pressure is going to come from. You never know which formation they're going to line up in. Is it two down linemen, three or four? Is it five defensive backs, six or seven? I mean, every defense wants to be aggressive and multiple, but head coach Brian Flores and defensive coordinator Josh Boyer, the first year defensive coordinator, have really done a good job at organizing a defense and bringing pressures especially on third down that have led to a lot of confusion and a lot of problems for opposing quarterbacks and offensive coordinators. Well, we know they brought the heat on Jared Goff. Can they do it again, considering Kyler Murray and his mobility to at least get out of the pocket and then take off and run? Dolphins have historically had a lot of problems against rushing quarterbacks. Uh, this year, Cam Newton and Josh Allen both had great success running the football obviously those are much larger men uh but you know it, it'll be very interesting to see how much kyler runs uh the dolphins you know have good athletes i mean van Noy is a good athlete andrew van ginkle a linebacker is a good athlete uh they have you know brandon jones is an athletic safety they have uh their safeties are former corners and some of their you know you get the idea some of their linebackers are former safeties so they have speed on defense. I know that's something the Cardinals have done in, in past years as well. Uh, but 
containing Murray on the ground is a major concern, and run defense in general is a major concern. As good as the Dolphins have been against the pass, they have not been outstanding against the run. And that's the one area the Cardinals have done very well this season, even though Kenyon Drake is expected to miss this week's contest. You brought up Brian Flores, the head coach, in his second season. A year ago at this time, the Dolphins 0-7. They're 4-3 and this year. What do you make on what he's been able to do in one year's time to get this team not only in the playoff picture, but perhaps maybe even winning the AFC East? Yeah, you know, the Dolphins, uh, you know, started 0-7 last year and then I think won, you know, five of the last nine or something like that and, and with no players at all. And so you knew, all right, this is a guy who can motivate players in Brian Flores. This is a guy who has a plan. You know, all, all the things that bad teams do, the Dolphins weren't doing even when they had bad players. And that means that there was a reduction in penalties. There was a reduction in turnovers. There was a reduction in mental mistakes. And so now when you start to add in highly drafted players and free agents who deserve to get paid, the you know, Brian Flores is every reason to believe they have the right coach for their future. And as we know, 80% of success in the NFL is do you have the right coach and quarterback? Tua Tagovailoa has you know nine more games to prove to the Dolphins and everybody across the NFL that you know, he was worthy of that top five selection. Get me out with this, Joe, as far as this is the final game the Dolphins will play against the NFC West, two and one with the one loss being against the Seahawks. It's divisions that don't play one another a lot, but why do you think the success the Dolphins have had against arguably the best division in all of football? You know, the Dolphins have pulled three upsets this year, uh, and so they're better than the odds makers thought. So talent is the number one reason. Uh, you know, when you look at, you know, they upset the Jaguars on the Thursday night. They upset uh, the, the, the Rams with Jared Goff, pressure. They upset the 49ers with a banged up Jimmy Garoppolo. You have to take with a little bit of green assault considering how many injuries the 49ers had. Uh, but, you know, I, I think, I think that the Dolphins just, they are um, a disciplined team. Uh, they are a well-organized team and a well-coached team. And, and really, it doesn't matter who they're playing, whether it's a long-time traditional opponent, whether it's uh, you know rival, whether it's you know on a Thursday night, on a Sunday night, on a Sunday afternoon, West Coast, East Coast. Uh, I really think that this team is just focused, and this is the most important thing, much, much improved from where they were a year ago. Yeah, it's shown up certainly so far this season. Joe Shad covers the Dolphins for the Palm Beach Post. Joe, appreciate you joining us here on Team to Team this week. Yeah, thanks for having me.